Thousands of people protested in Jerusalem yesterday, calling on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to resign. And the Florida State Supreme Court is set to release two key rulings today. Good morning. I'm Korva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. Thousands of Israelis are continuing a multi-day protest against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. NPR's Jennifer Ludden reports people are camping out in Jerusalem, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and for new elections. It's one of the largest demonstrations since the deadly Hamas attack six months ago launched Israel's war in Gaza. Thousands turned out Sunday night. Demonstrations are planned for days. Families of hostages held by Hamas have joined forces with groups that opposed Netanyahu even before the war. They say he's failed to secure a truce to release their loved ones, and they want elections now. Netanyahu says that would paralyze the country for months. In a speech Sunday night, he warned elections would disrupt talks for a hostage deal and end the war before it could completely rout Hamas. Jennifer Ludden, NPR News, Tel Aviv. Officials in Baltimore are getting ready to open a temporary channel into the port of Baltimore. Ship traffic was shut down after a cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge last week, collapsing it and killing six people. There's no timeline on when the alternate channel for vessels could open. The shutdown of the port is affecting the local economy, and Maryland Congressman Glenn Ivey says an extended closure will harm the national economy, too. This isn't something to play games with. This isn't a gotcha scenario. We need to just come together as a, as a Congress, as you know, leaders in the United States, put the funding together to get this done, because there's definitely a national benefit to getting it back up and running. The Biden administration has already directed $60 million be spent on the cleanup and rebuild of the shipping channel. The Florida Supreme Court is set to release two key rulings today. These will decide whether proposed constitutional amendments on abortion access and recreational marijuana will go before Florida voters in November. From member station WFSU, Lynn Hatter reports. Florida has a booming medical marijuana industry. Now there is a push to make it accessible to all through the recreational proposal. Governor Ron DeSantis isn't a fan. This is going to be part of your community. Uh, You're going to be, uh, and I've gone to some of these cities that that have, have this everywhere. It smells. Meanwhile, the effort to guarantee a right to abortion in Florida's Constitution is a response to the state attempting to restrict abortion to the first six weeks of pregnancy. And it comes in the aftermath of a U.S. Supreme Court decision that allows states to make their own rules. The Florida Supreme Court has the final say on whether the amendments will appear before voters. For NPR News, I'm Lynn Hatter in Tallahassee. Several states are holding primary elections tomorrow. Voters will go to the polls in Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, and Wisconsin. There will also be runoff primary elections held tomorrow in Arkansas and in Mississippi. You're listening to NPR. NPR.